it's Alexa and today I am sharing my massive spring book haul. I haven't filmed a haul since my January haul, I think. So these are all the books I had in February, March, April, and May, which is why it's a lot. Yeah, so we're just gonna get started and I'm just gonna go through these quickly. If I don't give enough of a summary for you, you can ask me in the comments and I will try and give you a better summary. This is in no particular order, except that I separated the books that I got from friends, the books I got from publishers, and the books I bought myself. So this time we're gonna start with the books that I got myself. First we have Daughter of the Pirate King by Trisha Levenseller, and it is about a girl named Alosa who happens to be the captain of her own ship and she deliberately lets herself get captured by the enemy crew in order to infiltrate their ship and search for the piece of a treasure map that her father needs. When Dimple Met Rishi by Sandhya Menon, it's about a girl named Dimple who wants to go to this sort of app development technology workshop type thing and she does not want to be in an arranged marriage. And there's a boy named Rishi who is the opposite where he believes in the tradition of arranged marriage. And the two of them meet at this app development summer camp type thing and things happen. Always and Forever, Lara Jean, which is the third book in the To All the Boys I've Loved Before series by Jenny Han. This focuses on Lara Jean in her senior year and trying to figure out what she's going to do about her future, her college plans, her relationships, her relationship with Peter Kay, and yeah, again, very, very fun contemporary YA read. When the Moon Was Ours by Anna Marie McLemore. It's about two best friends, Mayel and Sam, and they've been friends for all their lives, but both of them have secrets. And in their town, there are, there's a family with a group of girls called the Bonner Girls, and they threaten to expose some of these secrets if Mayel doesn't give them the roses that grow out of her skin. So it's magical realism, YA, beautiful writing from Anna Rae McLemore. The Wish Granter by CJ Redwine, which is the second book in the Ravenspire series. It is about a girl named Ari and her twin brother Thad, and her twin brother Thad has made a deal with a man called Alistair Teague in order to save him and Ari a long time ago and to become king of the kingdom, but now Alistair is sort of ruling it because he controls what Thad does. And so Ari is trying to find a way to save her brother, save the kingdom, and along the way maybe even fall in love. Hunted by Megan Spooner, which is a Beauty and the Beast retelling with a hint of Russian folklore in it. It's about a girl named Yiva who goes after her father into the woods only to discover that there is a beast that lives within the trees and has the very typical Beauty and the Beast storyline, but something that makes it special is the addition of Russian folklore. A Court of Wings and Ruin by Sarah J. Maas, and this is the third book for the first trilogy of the A Court of Thorns and Roses series. And I really love how she like finished the first story arc in this one. The Traitor's Kiss by Erin Beattie. This one is about a girl named Sage Fowler, who is an apprentice for a matchmaker. And she and the matchmaker are escorting a bunch of brides to the Concordium, where a lot of matches will be made. And they also have a military escort. And Sage finds herself becoming a spy and working with the military escort to uncover something treacherous that is lurking beneath the surface of all the places they've stayed at and all the things they're doing. Letters to the Lost by Bridget Kemmerer. Juliet writes letters to her mother and leaves them on her gravestone. And one day, Declan comes across one and replies back, and it is the start of an unlikely friendship. But in real life, they don't know that they're writing to each other. Fruits Basket, Volume 3 by Natsuki Takaya, obviously the third volume in the series and one that I'm hoping to read very soon. Devil in Spring by Lisa Kleypas. This is the third book in the Ravenel series and it focuses on Gabriel St. Vincent, yes, son of Sebastian St. Vincent and Evie, and Pandora Ravenel. It's their love story, it's very fun. The UK edition of A Court of Wings and Ruin because I collect them, you can probably see them on the shelf behind me. Gotham Academy Volume 3 Yearbook, another series that I mean to continue because I enjoyed the first two volumes so much. Alex Approximately by Jen Bennett, which is about a girl named Bailey who moves to her dad's town. And that also happens to be the same town that her online friend is from. She wants to meet him, but she's unsure, so she wants to see him before she meets him. But aside from that, she also gets a summer job working in this kooky museum. And she makes friends and also meets this boy that tends to get on her nerves a lot. The Names They Gave Us by Emery Lord about Lucy Hansen, who is dealing with the doubts and a crisis of faith 
because her mom's cancer has returned and instead of doing what her usual summer activity would be, she gets sent to a different summer camp where she meets new people who challenge her perspective in life. Wing Jones by Katherine Weber about a girl named Wing who is dealing with the after effects of her older brother who is like a star causing a drunk driving accident and actually killing someone. So she's dealing with her feelings to her brother, towards herself, towards her future, and it's really cool and it's got a tiny little magical spin to it as well. Night Owls by Jen Bennett, which is known as the anatomical shape of a heart in the US, and I just really like this cover. It's about a girl who's named Beatrix, who does art that is inspired by anatomy, and she meets this graffiti artist named Jack one night on the bus, and things happen. The Seventh Hokage and the Scarlet Spring by Masashi Kishimoto. This is a Naruto story and it is somewhere in between Shippuden and Boruto. And this one basically focuses on Sarada Uchiha questioning her parentage. And also obviously people trying to once again take over this world. Boruto Naruto the Next Generations Volume 1. I really enjoyed this. This is about the next generation of Naruto characters who all happen to be kids of the previous generation. The Long Game by Jennifer Lynn Barnes. This is the sequel to The Fixer and basically the continuation of Tess Kendrick's story. Royal Tour by Amy Alward, which is the sequel to Madly, which I really enjoyed. Flame in the Mist by Renee Adier. So it's about a girl named Mariko and she's on her way to be betrothed or to meet her betrothed when she gets attacked by members of the Black Clan. And because she escapes unscathed, she decides to dress as a peasant boy and infiltrate the clan in order to find out who put the bounty on her head. I have the US and the UK versions of Strange the Dreamer by Lainey Taylor and I still haven't read it but they're both really pretty. Let me just read the back to you. It says, On the second Sabbath of Twelfth Moon in the city of Weep, a girl fell from the sky. Her skin was blue, her blood was red. I don't even need to know what it's about. I just know that it's Lainey Taylor and I can't wait to read it. Ballerina Body, Dancing and Eating Your Way to a Leaner, Stronger and More Graceful You by Misty Copeland. And this one I picked up at her event in March and I really loved seeing her dance. This year I've already seen her dance. Oh no. I really love seeing Misty Copeland dance. She inspires me a lot so I really needed a copy of her book. I think that was all the books that I bought so now we're gonna move on to the books that I got from publishers. First is a movie tie-in cover version of Everything Everything. I also have the shirt. And this is about a girl who is allergic to everything and has to stay home and how her whole world opens up when a new boy moves in next door and convinces her that she can and should step out of her house. And then we have these really cute Roger Hargreaves books, uh, Doctor Who ones. We have Doctor Fourth, Doctor Twelfth, Doctor First, and Doctor Eleventh. And these are basically just little picture books about these four doctors and I'm excited for more. The Girl with the Make-Believe Husband by Julia Quinn. This is the second novel in the new Bridgerton series. I forget what it's called. The Rokesby's, I think? I don't even know what this one's about, but it's Julia Quinn, so I'm a roll with it. The Marriage Bureau, to the true story of how two matchmakers arrange love in wartime London by Penrose Halson. And obviously I'm just intrigued by the idea of matchmaking in a time of war because that just sounds really good. Historical fiction. The Cafe by the Sea by Jenny Colgan where a London girl about town goes back home to help her dad and her brothers run their family farm on an island and she ends up opening a cafe in that town. Vengeance Road by Erin Bowman, a western where a girl goes after the people who killed her father. And Retribution Rails which is the companion sequel to it. It's about completely different characters though, so I don't remember exactly what it's about, but I know it's a tra it involves a train and two new completely different characters. Juniper Lemon's Happiness Index by Julie Israel, and I really think this cover is so festive. So Ju Juniper finds a letter that her sister wrote to someone after her sister dies, and she vows to deliver the letter, and that's the basic premise of it, so I'm really curious about that. A sampler of Because You Love to Hate Me, which is 13 different tales with 13 different authors and YouTubers involved, and it's edited by Amory. And I love, love the idea of this collection. In Real Life by Cory Doctorow and Jen Wang. It's about a girl named Anda who loves this online game that she plays and she befriends someone there, only to realize that person is acting illegally in the game and so the lines are a bit blurred between what's wrong and what's right. This One Summer by Jillian Tamaki and Mariko Tamaki and I'm assuming it's about a summer. Delilah Dirk and the Turkish Lieutenant by Tony Cliff and I just really like the cover. I know nothing about what this one is about but the cover. The Last Magician by Lisa Maxwell and this symbol is so cool. 
basically the tagline of this one is stop the magician steal the book save the future so in modern day new york magic is extinct and there are very few mages left if you go into manhattan you're going to get trapped on that island and lose your powers so Esta is a thief and she's been trained to steal um, the artifacts from the order that created that little the place called the brink where the magic is lost and everything. Um, she has an ability to manipulate time so it definitely helps. And then she is sent back to old New York in order to fix things so that the order who are in charge of the brink can be destroyed. Some are unscripted by Jen Klein and this one is cute. It's basically about a girl named Rainy who ends up starting to like this guy named Tuck and then she wants to work at a summer job with him but at the summer job she meets another boy named Milo and things get complicated. Defy the Stars by Claudia Gray. Defy the Stars is a space story and it's about a girl who is a soldier and a robot and they are on opposite sides of this war. Saints and Misfits by SK Ali. There are three kinds of people in Jaina's, I think it's Jaina, Jana's or Jaina's world. Uh, saints who do everything right, obviously. Uh, misfits who are like her who don't quite fit into the situations where they belong and monsters like the one that at the mosque where she goes to except that Jaina knows that he's not a monster so this sounds really interesting and I can't wait to check it out Carnivalesque by Neil Jordan and oh my gosh look at this freaking cover it's about a boy who goes to a carnival gets pulled into a mirror and then another boy comes out of the mirror and goes home with his parents and he finds himself in this topsy-turvy world Royal Bastards by Andrew Svart, and all I know about this one is that it's like Game of Thrones but YA style again. Queer, There and Everywhere, 23 People Who Changed the World by Sarah Prager, and this basically is a recounting of different people in history and their true stories, including their sexuality. Spill Zone by Scott Westerfeld and Alex Poveland, and this cover so shiny. Three years ago, in upstate New York, an event destroyed Addison's hometown and forever changed reality within its borders. Overnight, Poughkeepsie became a waking nightmare, home to unearthly and lethal dangers. Now quarantined from the rest of the world, a few dare to enter the spill zone. Armed with only a camera, Addy ventures into the zone to photograph its twisted phenomena, but getting close enough for the perfect shot can mean death or worse. Within the spill zone, something sinister, sinister awaits and calls Addison's name. So that sounds like it could be really fun. The Valiant by Leslie Livingston, which is about Fallon, who gets kidnapped and becomes a female gladiator under Julius Caesar. And now the last category is books that I got from other people. I'm going to start with the two Harry Potters. There is this one and... And this one, and they are both Spanish editions that my friend Rachel brought back from her trip to Barcelona. And then we have two books that Kristen over at Super Space Chick gave me. First is, first is Wind Witch by Susan Dennard, the sequel to Truth Witch, and this one focuses primarily on Merrick, although Sophia, Isolt, and Eduan are also present in the story. And then we have A Conjuring of Light by V.E. Schwab, which is the last book in this series. I have the first and the last, I don't have the second, so I can't binge read them just yet. And the last book that I'm going to share in this video is actually one that has a really random story. I was on my way home from Charleston and I was sitting next to this nice older lady on the plane and she was reading The Nest and she looked like she was really into it so I was telling her that I'd heard a lot of interesting things about that one and that I hoped she was enjoying it and she was like yes I'm really enjoying it it's very entertaining and then at the end of the flight she turns to me and she hands me her copy of The Nest by Cynthia Dupree Sweeney and she says she hopes I enjoy it because she had actually gone out of her way to finish it on our flight from Charleston to New York so that she could give it to me which I thought was really sweet so I will treasure it and I will obviously also be reading it so thank you Jody, and I am really really grateful that you decided to give me this book and there you have it guys those were all the books I think they were all the books that I acquired for spring let me know which titles you're interested in or you want to hear more about I would love to know and tell me what you guys have been getting this, these past few months for your book hauls. I would love to see it. As always, all my social media links are down below and you guys can look forward to another video soon. Bye!